So Willie and Corey, The Blind, this film looks absolutely phenomenal. Willie, I'll start with you because this is a very personal story. You know, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the real life story of your parents and your family. What was it like to watch this go from sort of the real life memories you have into something that will be shown on the big screen? Yeah, it was difficult. Um, it was, you know, I'd heard. There's nothing I saw in the movie I hadn't seen, but I hadn't heard before. Uh, so mom and dad have been pretty transparent about their lives, and um, but it's just difficult. Yeah, when they put it all on the screen, have people portraying it, it was really you know you're sad for mom for going through that. You're um, you're you know, and you I guess I'm understanding of feel you know, like I was like he was just he was blinded, and so fortunately for me. Uh, I don't really have any of the memories like pretty much where the movie ends is where I start having uh, memories. So, but I could sense, I could sense like even as a child, I knew they'd come out of something uh, harsh and uh, yeah, it was, it was difficult to watch. Yeah. You know, and, and Corey, your family, I mean, a lot of people watching Duck Dynasty, getting to know your family over the years, they would say, oh, it's the perfect family. Look, you know, they, they have everything. They're perfect. They love one another, which is all true. You guys love Thank one another. Much. You're close. But yet everybody has a past. And this is this is a film that documents the darkness <laughs> coming out of the darkness and coming into the light for you, Corey. What are you hoping the audience takes away from this? Yeah, I think that's why it was important for us to tell the story because, you know, you look in scripture and over and over again, the people that God uses are not the perfect people. It's not the perfect family, the everything they have it all together. You know, it's it's in our weakness that God's glory is revealed and, he, and that we are made strong. And so I think that it is important to tell that, you know, so people can understand that like God can use you and your story, even if your past looks like this, even if you know, there's things in your, in your story that what, that was really horrible. There was a moment when you felt like all was lost, you know, God can redeem that and turn that around. And so that's really the message of this movie is that no one's too far gone from the love of Jesus, that no one, um, no one is without hope and without too far gone from the grace that Jesus offers. And as you, as you watch this film, there's this powerful moment where of Phil's repentance in case forgiveness and like that's something that we all have to come to in our lives you know we have to whether it's we go to the depths that Phil kind of went to that you see in this film but there's all we all have to come to that point of repentance and we have to come to a point where we're offering forgiveness to other people because people are going to let us down yeah, no, absolutely. And that's such an important thing. And I, and I feel like you guys have always been really open. You know, you've told this story before, and I think that's important to emphasize. But the way you've told it, it's very different getting to see it, right? Okay. Getting to watch it um, unfold in that way. And for you, Willie, and Corey, I'd love for you to answer this after too. But, you know, looking at your parents, obviously knowing them your entire life, when you saw the film, you guys were obviously instrumental in bringing it to fruition. But when you watch the final product, what new insights maybe or changes or just, you know, new ways of looking at your parents and your family did you sort of have as a result of seeing the story in a different way? Yeah, for me, I think it was just probably the depth, you know, just, you know, again, I, I'd, I'd, I'd known these stories, but seeing the depth and also seeing how God was working, because uh, you'll see in the movie where, you know, at the time when Phil kicked us out, um, I could understand why Kay, there was no, there was no relationship there really left. And so I think that's where the hopelessness fell in for her, but it was dad's sister, my, my aunt Jan, who, uh, who really never gave up on Phil. And so begged this pastor to, to drive up across state lines. It was, it's not convenient at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm, to this day, I'm just so thankful he did that. Uh, cause to walk in that bar and it just made me feel like, what would that feel like? You know, I've shared my faith, but I don't know that I've walked into a bar and taken a, a guy who's adversarial to anything of faith and especially to him as a, as a pastor, um, is to walk in there and actually be that bold and to share it. I mean, Phil's a, uh, was a scary guy. He's still a bit scary to me, um, <laughs> but to walk in there and actually sit down and bring a Bible in this place, you know, it was just amazing. It just, it just created more depth. You know, I'd heard this story and I've told this story. Uh, tons of times, but just watching that was like, wow, that is, it just made it real. It was like, wow, he really walked in there not knowing what was going to happen. And then Phil didn't, 
immediately respond either, but, but it also showed me too, man, sometimes you just plant that seed, you know, give someone another option. And uh, unfortunately for Phil, uh, you know, or perhaps fortunately his life continued to spin out of control, especially then when he was in the loneliness and depths of despair and everything else he was doing that actually pushed him to the Lord. And sometimes that's what it takes for, for a bunch of people it was just to hit rock bottom, you know, and that's where, that's where he was. And so, uh, yeah, just watching that all unfold was like, you, you realize, man, this could have went either way. You know, dad could have just said it's over and our mom could have, you know, said it, that's over. I'm getting a divorce. I'm going to, you know, remarry. And which I, I totally would understand that. However, if that would have happened, my life would look completely different. And, I wouldn't be talking to you right now <laughs> because through the, right. through the company that wasn't even there and then through the television show uh, that came out of that. Um, it's amazing how just God worked through that and just, you know, I uh, was able to uh, bring them out of that. Again, like what Corey said, it's the combination of the two, you know, forgiveness and, and change. Yeah, yeah, this one thing that I love about the film is we show childhood, you know, Kay and Phil, there's actually three actors that could play Kay and Phil because they go from childhood to teenage years to adult years. And you do, you start to understand like, oh, what are the things that made them who they are? And that led to some of those choices. Cause we all have that, you know, things from our childhood or family of origin that, you know, led us to make some thing, make some mistakes and bad decisions as adults. So for Phil, you know, you look at that, um, the things that he experienced, their family was very poor. You know, they had in, they had, there's a line that, um, that you hear a couple times in the movie where, um, Phil's dad first says to him, who's the man? Who, and who's a man? Who's a man? Who's a I've man? I've heard it a bunch of times yeah. in my <laughs> life. Who's a man? This like idea that like, oh, you got to be the man. You got to be strong. You got to like carry all of it, you know? And then his mom, Phil's mom, you know, had mental illness and was in and out of mental hospitals. And how did that affect him? And, you know, just how Phil and Kay met and she got pregnant in high school, what was that like for her to be a teenage mom and for the responsibilities, you know, all of a sudden to be on these two, you know, so all these things, you know, play into making them who they are and, and the choices that they made in their twenties. And I think you can look at your own life and kind of see all that, but I think that gave me some new insight into Phil and Kay and kind of, there's also this thing that is about like freedom where Phil was always kind of that freedom he felt in the woods, always looking for freedom and when he was in his bad phase, he thought that looked like I can do whatever I want. I can go drink. I can party. I can, I need freedom. I need freedom from this wife and kids or whatever. But then whenever he comes to the Lord, he realizes what freedom really looks like. And um, yeah, so those kind of themes, as you, as you see their full story, it helps you to understand a little bit more. And I think that we can do that with one another. Like when we grasp, when we look at somebody, you see where they are and the choices that you're making, you can be like, oh, they're horrible or make judgments about them. But if you know their whole story, then it, it helps you to offer a little bit more grace. Yeah, it doesn't excuse bad behavior, but you can also certainly understand it better and understand, mm -hmm. ah, that's now I see where that's coming from. And, and I think that's helpful for all adults, you know, yeah. is to understand, have some understanding going, okay, I see where, how you're raised and mm -hmm. I see what you heard, you know. And so again, I mean, Bad behavior is bad behavior, but uh, but oftentimes, which is why when a tragedy happens, we always want to know where where did this come from? Where did this? Why did this person do this? You know, and so you try to go back so that you can help others. You know, we're dealing with that. Yeah. Now I love what you were saying too, um, Corey, about freedom. You know that this yeah. idea that you know culture sort of sells this lie of what freedom is, and yet. Phil discovered what it really truly is when he found Christ. And, you know, that's, that's the gospel message, finding true freedom, you know, in him. And, you know, I look at, I look at this story and one of the things that stands out, I think about Willie, your aunt and, you know, just never giving up on people. And again, we don't want to excuse bad behavior, like you were saying, or ignore things that are unhealthy or toxic, but this idea that we, we should never really fully give up on people, right? Because we never know when somebody like Phil is going to come around. Yeah. And it would be, uh, that's the beauty of the church and even family, which is having other people able to step in there, even when you can't, you know? And so I know, uh, someone else can step in there and really take it and say, Hey, I've got this. Let me, you know, let me take a go at it. And that was so important and vital in our story because again, I don't think Kay had the wherewithal to, you know, I think she was done and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any arguments with that either. <laughs> 
but having someone else step in there. So, you know, oftentimes through life, I've, you know, maybe I've helped a, a teenager, helped a college kid or somewhere where their parents, they cannot make that connection, but maybe I can, you know, maybe I can come in there without all the history, without, I can just look at it from a different way. And so um, we definitely see that in that movie. And I think that's really helpful, even for church members or whatever to, to step in and say, hey, let, let, let me help you out here. Yeah. Well, and I have to say, too, you know, talking with your parents, talking with you guys about this film, you know, I, I've known a bit about Phil's story and I'm and I'm excited to see it be told in this way. But it gave me a lot of new insight on on Kay's story, right, mm-hmm. on these two different journeys, because what you were saying before, Corey, about the forgiveness, like when somebody has done wrong to you, a spouse, right? All these things have happened. Having to forgive and learn to trust again, that's a big thing for so many people. And so I don't know if you want to speak to that at all, Corey, but it seems to me a really pertinent part of this uh, journey. Yeah, I think that is so, was such a powerful thing that Kay did. You know, sometimes you look at like, oh, um, forgiveness. I don't, sometimes I think the world might see forgiveness as being weak, but you know, and the economy of Christ, like forgiveness is the ultimate act of, you know, of, of offering grace to someone else because you've been offered that within yourself. But yeah, there's a part where Kay, um, you know, whenever Phil does come back, she's like, you need more than what I can give you. And she points him, you know, to the pastor again and points him back to Jesus because we can't do that for other people. We can't, we can't change someone else's behavior. We can't do any of that. But we can do is offer forgiveness when that time comes when they do repent. And forgiveness is, you know, for yourself as well, because it releases that hold that they might have on you. There's also a line where Kay says, um, you know, feels like I'm trying and I'm not going to be perfect. And she says, I know you're not going to be perfect, but we're going to do this together. You know, and I think that that was very powerful, too, just to acknowledge that, like, okay, this isn't going to be easy just because you say, okay. I've been baptized. I've, I've I've taken on Jesus. It, it's not like everything changes in an instant. You know, God's going to have to work on, it had to work on their marriage and they had to do the things to work on to make that change in their life. And, um, and Phil and Kay did that. And what a beautiful example is that, that has that been for us because, you know, it changed our legacy. It changed generation after generation in our family. We're so grateful for that. Well, I appreciate you both coming on with us today. The movie is The Blind. It comes out September 28th. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.